latest assessment on global climate change. Global surface temperature change for the end of the 21st century. It's likely to rise between one and a half and four and a half Using degrees. Using the Fahrenheit metric by 2.7 to 8.1 degrees. A 10 inch to three feet sea level rise. By 2100, what is today a one in a hundred year storm will be an annual occurrence. Keep global temperature rise below the agreed two degrees Celsius threshold. Several of the impacts we're concerned about seeing globally by 2100 have already occurred in the Arctic. For this reason, the Arctic is the canary in the coal mine for global climate change. Since 1979, the volume of summer Arctic sea ice has decreased by 80%. This loss has been accompanied by changes in the ice's composition. Multi-year ice is thick ice that lasts for more than one year and is more resistant to melting. You can think of this as your reliable ice. In contrast, first-year ice is your thinner, fickle ice that forms seasonally every winter, only to melt again in the summer. In just five years, between 2003 and 2008, scientists saw a 48% decline in the percent composition of multi-year ice in the Arctic. As multi-year ice declines, the Arctic becomes more vulnerable to future rapid melting, bringing us closer and closer to an ice-free summer. Models predict that we will see our first ice-free summer by mid-century, as ice breaks up and is transported out of the Arctic by currents, it makes coastlines of Arctic nations vulnerable to coastal erosion and increases the likelihood of collision by rogue icebergs for Arctic oil platforms and fishing and shipping vessels. Diminishing sea ice plays a central role in increasing Arctic warming. This is a vicious cycle. Increasing temperatures lead to a loss of sea ice, which in turn amplifies warming, speeding the loss of even more ice. This polar amplification has resulted in the majority of the Arctic warming at a rate two to four times faster than the global average. Even more troubling, global climate models using the IPCC business as usual scenario predict an increase in average Arctic temperatures of seven degrees centigrade or 12.6 degrees Fahrenheit by 2100. The Arctic is one of the ecosystems most stressed by climate change. Sea ice is a central element in the Arctic ecosystem, and more than a thousand unique species depend on it for their survival. Rapid environmental changes lead to shifts in where animals can live, alter food webs, and may lead to extinctions for the cold-loving animals who call the Arctic home. You may have heard about how ocean acidification will affect coral reefs in the future. However, its mark has already been seen in the Arctic. When water absorbs anthropogenic carbon dioxide, the water becomes more acidic and reduces the availability of minerals that shelled organisms need to build their shells. Cold water takes up more carbon dioxide than warm water, and so ocean acidification is proceeding more rapidly in the Arctic. A recent study found that 20% of the surface waters in the Canadian basin are already undersaturated with respect to aragonite, a mineral many organisms use to build their skeletons and shells. This leaves organisms that are important to the Arctic food web, such as small sea snails called pteropods, very vulnerable. Climate change is being acutely felt in the Arctic right now. This magnitude of warming has many serious policy implications. Changes in the Arctic Circle will affect the rest of the world through additional greenhouse gas emissions, sea level rise, and changes to global ocean circulation. Unfortunately, due to the difficulties of working in the harsh Arctic environment, there's a great scarcity in baseline data on the Arctic. Eight countries border the Arctic Ocean, and many other countries are interested in developing the Arctic for economic use. Greater international cooperation on policies regarding the Arctic and joint funding for scientific work are needed to monitor this rapidly changing polar ecosystem. We are ocean scientists for informed policy, and we want to bring the latest research on how climate change is affecting the ocean to a public policy audience. 